Yo, what's up? So this is another Jump Jet episode, and what we're doing is we're going through a set of uh, typical questions that you'll get when you go for a front-end uh, developer job. Um, we're getting these questions from a pretty cool GitHub uh, website that lists like a hundred of them. So there's going to be a lot of videos by the end of this. Uh, we've covered a few so far, and today is uh, kind of a cool one. So the question would be, um, how do you serve a web page in multiple languages? This might be something that happens um, fairly frequently when you have to internationalize a, a project. Uh, and so there's a few ways to go about answering this question. One of the, the basics that I would cover first of all is, are you dealing with uh, like a CMS, like WordPress or uh, like Wix or something like that? Or are you building a custom website? If you're using a CMS, then uh, one of the answers would be you'd look for plugins or um, additional software that you can add into that CMS. Uh, that will do the translations for you or give you a way to edit the content into multiple translations. Um, the other way is if you're doing a custom project, essentially what you're going to be doing is um, you would store multiple versions of the site's content on a, on a database and based upon a user interaction or something like uh, detecting the, uh, the territory that the user is coming from, you would serve up content that's being translated into a different version. So I'm currently in Germany. So uh, a lot of the time, even though I speak English, I'll visit a website and I see the German version because they're detecting my location and they're serving up a German version uh, of the page. So, um, that's one side of things that you could um, you have the server basically control uh, the kind of content that you're seeing. Another thing is that within the web page itself, uh, there are certain ways to define the language of the page. So here on the W3C, uh, you can see up here on the right hand side that we have this language attribute. So this is a way for us to um, send some information to the browser about the type of language we're using. And also um, that will tell the browser the type of character set that it should be using. There is also a more specific way to um, tell the browser what character set to use. Uh, I had that up here somewhere. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Unless I got rid of it. Uh, but you can use, uh, there's a meta tag. Uh, where you you define the uh, the character set. Usually you, you're going to be using like UTF-8, which is a, a Unicode character set. That's going to cover most of the Latin alphabet um, and the characters that you typically find in uh, Latin-based languages. But that opens up another kettle of worms in that you may have languages that um, have characters that aren't um, rendered by that uh, character set. So you'd have to consider when you're setting up a web page, what languages is it being translated into and do they have characters um, that are covered by the standard UTF-8 or are you going to need to add in like a different library that can handle these different uh, characters, these non-standard characters. But it gets even more complex because you may or may not know this, there are a lot of languages in the world and uh, they don't all read like English from left to right. You have languages like Japanese or Arabic and they actually read the opposite way, they read right to left. So that um, means that not only should you be serving up a translated page from the server and telling the browser the language it should be rendering, uh, but you may also need to flip the layout of the web page based upon the language that you're showing. Uh, one cool thing is that uh, Flex, which is a new CSS um, base layout, um, it's called Flexbox. You can Google that. We might cover it at another point. Flex enables you to change the orientation or the direction of the page pretty easily. So you can do LTR, left to right, and RTL, right to left. 
So what you could do is when you see that you're serving the page in, for example, Arabic, you, uh, you set a class on the document that will just flip the, the Flexbox layout from L to R to RTL, and that will actually change the, the content, and you can also use it to change the direction of the writing. Uh, and what else do we have? Um, the, when you're uh, serving um, a, web, a web page in multiple languages, you probably also want to consider how does the user select the different languages? Like, are you showing flags? Are you showing the name of the language in its native tongue? Uh, and is it reflected in the URL? Because sometimes I might visit a page and I see EN in the, uh, the URL, or it might be DE or, or what have you. So that's a way to for the user to be able to change the URL and get a different version of the page, but sometimes it's not reflected there at all. So you have to consider how you um, give the, the user power to change the language of the page themselves. Uh, and one really interesting point that I hadn't even considered is uh, if you're using something like a capture, so you can see down here, uh, this is a cool Toots Plus um, um, page. Captures can sometimes be written in a certain language, but if you're serving up, uh, say, Japanese content, uh, but you're serving up captures in English, that's pretty hard because captures are hard enough uh, themselves rather than having making people kind of have to do translations already. So when you're serving up pages in multiple languages, that's something else to consider. This article is pretty good. You can check out that, uh, that URL. They go through a few other considerations uh, when you're serving up content in multiple languages. But essentially that's it. You have your translations on the server. You serve them up. This is if, if you're doing a custom website. You double check that you're covering the characters, uh, like Latin or non-Latin, um, and you define the language in the HTML, uh, and you also consider the layout or the orientation of the language and of the page. So that was, is actually way more complicated than I expected. Um, I haven't done too many translations, but it's definitely something that has to be deeply considered and planned for uh, before beginning a project that will be translated. Um, and if you give that answer in general, you cover some of those points, uh, the interviewer is going to know that you know what you're talking about and uh, you know it's not as easy as it sounds all the time. So thanks for watching. Um, give this a like or subscribe uh, if you'd like. And yeah, I hope it's helping people prepare for interviews. Any feedback is welcome. Um, I'll be doing a lot of these. Oh yeah, Happy New Year, because it's like the 2nd of January, 2017. We made it. Uh, okay, good luck.